The project is, is sort of a three-pronged approach to figuring out why we're seeing more harmful algae blooms in the state of Minnesota in our inland lakes. Um, harmful algae blooms are, the reports of them anyways, are on the rise both worldwide within the Great Lakes Basin and within Minnesota inland lakes. So we know that it is affected by um, climate change, we know that it's affected by uh, human land use changes, but what we don't know is well, a few things. One, are these things really becoming more frequent or is it just that there are more of us out there on the water uh, in more places more of the time so we encounter them more frequently? Uh, we also don't know what the exact mechanisms are that regulate uh, how these uh, blooms form, why they occur, and you know, what changes have happened that are making them occur more frequently. Um, one of the reasons this research is very important is that uh, harmful algae blooms, well, to kind of take a step back, algae are naturally occurring. Uh, the, the subset of species that are potentially harmful are also naturally occurring, but that little subset of species can produce toxins under the right conditions that can be harmful to wildlife, to livestock, to pets, to human health. Um, so it can be anything from, from very minor impacts, so like swimmer's itch, or bad tastes or odors in your drinking water uh, to very serious impacts. Uh, there have been a number of dog deaths and wildlife and livestock deaths in Minnesota. Um, it can hospitalize people or in really serious cases it could even kill somebody. Um, in Minnesota, because we have lakes in different bedrock types and lakes with different land uses and lakes that have been impacted by agricultural fertilizers, our nitrogen and phosphorus ratios aren't tightly linked to each other. So we can look at the influence of nitrogen and the influence of phosphorus independent of one another. Um, and this is something that, you know, when you have a, a large landscape gradient and a, a wide variety of lakes and a state with famously over 10,000 lakes, we have a unique opportunity to do that here where we wouldn't have it uh, in other states or, or more, more southerly climates. One of the big things for determining how much uh, harmful algae you can get in a lake is just how productive that lake is or how much alg algal growth there is in general. Um, and that's regulated in large part by, by nutrients or, or fertilizers uh, that make their way into the lake. So one of the things that we see uh, basically in, in the southern part of the state uh, where we do have a higher prevalence of harmful algae species and, and overall more algae in the lakes is the lakes are surrounded by a lot more agriculture. So a lot of those agricultural fertilizers can run off and get into the lakes and help the algae grow. In other cases, we actually see the same sort of thing, but it's not agricultural fertilizers, it's suburban, um, you know, residential lawn fertilizers. So people who like to have a nice green lawn, but their lawn goes right down to the water's edge, a lot of those fertilizers can get into the lake and, and help stimulate algal growth as well. Um, but the other thing that, that we think is, is playing a role is climate change. And a lot of the harmful species that we see out there uh, can actually regulate their buoyancy. And they need to have light for photosynthesis, so they want to float to the top of the water. Um, as the water gets warmer and warmer, it becomes less dense. So things that can regulate their, their buoyancy and float have a lot better chance of surviving than things that can't regulate their buoyancy that are comparatively heavier and sink more quickly in light warm water. Uh, so that temperature change is also uh, changing it. The longer growing season, the longer stratified period in the lakes is contributing to these blooms uh, becoming more prevalent as well.